In the early 21st century, they came. No one knows where they came from or what ultimate effect they would have on the world of Search. But once they arrived, nothing in Search would be the same again. They are the machine learning algorithms. Machine learning program initiated. Search ranking algorithm engaged. Located low quality content. Locate manipulative link schemes. Poor quality site detected. Exterminate. 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 You can't really understand SEO today without understanding the impact of machine learning. Here's why. Eric, you've been studying and following machine learning for some time now, but where did it start for you? Well, back in 2011, I did an interview with Google's Peter Norvig that opened my eyes to the possibilities of machine learning for search. Peter told me how Google used machine learning to teach their Google Translate program new languages. I immediately recognized that Google could and probably would use that technology for many other things, including improving its search ranking algorithms. So I set about to learn as much as I could about machine learning and even took a full course on Coursera by Andrew Ng of Stanford University. And he's actually the chief scientist at Baidu, by the way. Yeah. Um, and I learned enough from that to begin experimenting with my own machine learning programs. And oh. since then, I've actually taken more courses as well. That's awesome. Well, let's back up for a moment, though, and make sure we understand what machine learning is. Can you explain that? Sure. First, there are basically two kinds, supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning. First, let's look at the supervised machine learning. So, at a most basic level, think of the supervised version as a series of equations created to fit a known set of data. Let's say you want to try to predict housing prices. You could start with a simple data set like this one we're showing right now. The data, by the way, is fictitious, but will serve the purpose for this example. We can then plot the data on a graph. No surprise here, as the size of a house increases, the price goes up. But this model is way too simplistic. And so there are many factors that go into the price of a house, such as lot size, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, et cetera. Now a simple straight line graph won't do to give us the data we need. So we have to design weights to each of these new factors. For example, the number of bedrooms or bathrooms are factors, but not as important as the lot size. And we haven't begun to weigh in other factors, such as the location, there'd be a big difference between a house in Austin, Texas and say downtown New York. Sure. So as you can see, our solution is becoming a lot more complex. Supervised machine learning can be really good for solving these kinds of problems. We'd set up large sets of data to begin with and we'd call that training data and design an algorithm to make a prediction based on that data. We then look at the results to see how they match up with the real world, adjust our algorithms as needed and feeding new training data along the way. This process is what we call supervised machine learning. So what is unsupervised machine learning? Unsupervised machine learning comes into play when we don't have training examples to work with. In such a case, you try to build an algorithm that can recognize patterns and similarities among diverse objects. For example, you might start with data that looks like this. The algorithm will then attempt to analyze this data and figure out how to group the data points together based on common characteristics. Perhaps in this example, all of the red X points in the following chart share similar attributes. So unlike supervised machine learning, where you're providing training data that includes examples of real world results um, and telling it some sample ways to give weights to try to predict those results, with unsupervised machine learning, the algorithm is left to figure out the patterns all by itself and it's designed to do its own testing with constant feedback loops to iteratively improve its ability to understand the data and group those data sets together accurately. Okay, so how does all that apply to SEO then? Well, never forget that Google has a high incentive to keep improving the quality of its search results. As there's a strong correlation between user satisfaction with those results and Google's revenue from search ads. These days, Google faces stiff competition in search, not only from other traditional search engines such as Bing, but from newer players like Amazon, Apple, Siri, and Microsoft's Cortana, and even Facebook. So Google needs to continually improve the quality and usefulness of its search results. But doing that at the massive scale of the entire internet is too daunting a task 
for human engineers to solve alone. And this is where machine learning algorithms actually enter into the picture. Well, given that, what do SEOs need to do? What, what should they actually put into practice? Well, knowing that Google is getting better and better at assessing content quality and user satisfaction at massive scale, those two things must be treated as ranking factors for all your pages. So here are some questions to ask yourself. First, does your page meet the intent of a large percentage of the people who will visit it? Second, are you providing the help users might need to select the right product or learn to use it? Third, do users get good suggestions of related products they might need? Fourth, are there gaps in your content in the page? Are there details or related information you could put on it to flesh out the content more? And fifth, does your page provide a higher quality experience than the pages of competitors? And finally, do you have a strategy for measuring page performance and how to improve it? Well, thanks, Eric. Now, our viewers will want to check out your article on the impact of machine learning on SEO to get even more insights. We'll put a link in the episode notes. And now we return you to our regularly scheduled program, Dr. What versus the Dialects, already in progress. Fearless leader, calling fearless leader. Come in, fearless leader. Over. Ah, my machine learning algorithm earth invasion force. Splendid. Report. Fearless leader, mission is accomplished. Search quality improved, webmasters creating better content, paid link schemes exterminated. Excellent, excellent. You have earned the highest reward. You shall be the first of your kind to see the face of your creator. I am not worthy. I am not worthy. Behold, your fearless leader.